Deathloop is coming to PlayStation Plus in September, but will this affect it releasing on Xbox and onto Xbox Game Pass? IO Interactive is happy with the performance of Hitman 3 in Game Pass and Tokyo Game Show. Xbox is going to be present once again. All right, guys, before we get into this, I have four months to hit my goal of 10,000 subscribers. I see a lot of you are new to this channel. If you are, please consider hitting that subscribe button if you enjoy this video. All right, we got an interesting announcement here for PlayStation Plus. As we know, every single month now, they release their monthly games into their PlayStation Plus premium and extra tiers of their subscription service. And the main game, the highlight for September is going to be Deathloop as it is entering the PlayStation Plus extra and premium game catalog on September 20th. Now, the reason this is interesting is because Deathloop, an arcane game, an Xbox game studio game, has been exclusive on PlayStation for a year. If you remember when they put out the trailer at the very end, they had that Deathloop picture and at the bottom in fine print, it said that it is not going to be available on any other console until September 14th, 2022, meaning that is an entire year of exclusivity. So everybody's expecting Deathloop to be on Xbox Game Pass this September, as soon as the exclusivity ends. And now this has people questioning, what does this mean? How is PlayStation getting this in to PlayStation Plus after the end of the exclusivity deal as it is coming in September 20th? And will this affect the game coming at all over to the Xbox platform and into Xbox Game Pass? Now, we don't know any of those details, I have a feeling that it won't. I still think Deathloop is going to be coming to Xbox Game Pass probably on the same day, but hopefully it will be coming the six days earlier on September 14th. But as people waiting for this game for an entire year to play it, expecting it coming to Xbox Game Pass, there is a little bit of concern here as to if this could affect it in any way whatsoever. At the end of the day, this is a deal that was negotiated and done before Xbox acquired Bethesda, before they acquired Arcane, And Xbox is staying firm on not going back and amending any of those deals or breaking any of those contracts for these games going forward. For all we know, maybe PlayStation approached Arcane, approached Xbox and asked them if they could get this game into Xbox Game Pass and they made a deal for it. They made a bunch of money off it and they were like, okay, we'll put it into PlayStation Plus because it's going to be coming over to Xbox Game Pass anyways. It's just an interesting thing that they would announce it at this point when a lot of people are sitting there expecting and waiting for Deathloop to come over to Xbox Game Pass in September. And I think going forward, Xbox is really going to approach these types of deals differently, especially now that they are part of Xbox Game Studios. I don't think you will see this happen again. There's also Tokyo Ghostwire, which we know is an Xbox Game Studios game that is exclusive on PlayStation again for another year. And we won't be getting that, I think, until May. And we'll see if they do the same thing with Tokyo Ghostwire, if they're going to launch you right into the service when the year is up for the console exclusivity. All right, jumping over here to some Game Pass news and IO Interactive and some more proof of just how much Game Pass actually helps developers when they put their games into the service. This was their annual report that was published. It is for the year ending March 2020 due. And IO reported that their revenue came in at a 7% increase in year over year. Now, Hitman 3 is a game that initially released in 2021 in January, did very well, was critically acclaimed, and it is a great game overall if you've ever jumped into it. And then a year later in January of 2022, they release it into Xbox Game Pass. And IO talks about Xbox Game Pass and how this has helped IO Interactive, their revenues and all that type of stuff. The income statement for 2021-2022 shows a profit. IO Interactive's main source of revenue is still Hitman 3 released back in January of 2021. Hitman 3 overperformed the first year against the initial sales budget and performs well in year two with the release on Steam. The game also launched on Microsoft Xbox Game Pass, which has additional revenue including performance bonus and minimum guarantees. Backlog continues to perform well. The revenue in fiscal year 22 is higher than the expectations last year, mainly because of the Game Pass launch in Hitman 3 sales are higher than expectations on other platforms. And they consider these results to be satisfactory, but this gives us more insight as to what these deals can do for these developers, for these publishers, in terms of helping them continuously make money off of their games going forward after a year of release. And this is gonna be huge, continuing to show the industry that if you put your games into Xbox Game Pass, 
years after the hype's kind of died down for them, you're going to be able to get more revenue going forward and more people jumping in and playing. One of the other things that they show off here is just kind of the deal that they've done for this game, which is they get performance bonuses, which I'm guessing how many people downloaded the game, how many people are playing it. And then you have those minimum guarantees if I guess they don't reach a certain threshold of the amount of people that check it out and play it. We know Phil Spencer has talked about deals in terms of just paying developers for the smaller games. For example, we saw Cooking Simulator, which I believe made like $600,000 to get its game into Xbox Game Pass. And then you have bigger games out here that have those performance bonuses and those minimum guarantees. So we get more insight into the deals that are being made and just how much they actually help these developers and help big name games like Hitman continue to make money throughout the years after its release. And finally here, just a quick announcement about Xbox and the Tokyo Game Show. They are once again going to be present at this show. I feel like they always should be present there as they're trying to grow in Japan, as they're trying to get more IPs and more games from Japanese developers into the Xbox ecosystem. As Xbox is doing much better this generation than last generation in Japan, just makes a ton of sense. So they're gonna be at the Tokyo Game Show and they say here, we invite fans to tune into the Tokyo Game Show 2022 Xbox stream where you can expect to see updates on existing titles from Xbox Game Studios and titles launching from developer partners that we hope will delight players here in Japan, across Asia, and around the world. The show will be September 15th at 2 a.m. Pacific, 5 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So very early in the morning, depending on where you live, but you will still be able to catch some sort of replay if you don't watch it live. But it's good that they're there. We take a look at Xbox this generation and they have been doing better in Japan. Like I said, the console sales are better. They got a game like Soul Hackers 2 on the console from Atlas, which is a big thing. Something that if people enjoy these games, they should definitely go out and support that stuff. So more of those games come over to the Xbox console. And thirdly, we saw the finally the addition of the Persona games coming over to Xbox, which is going to be huge starting off with Persona 5 coming in October to Xbox Game Pass. That's it for me, guys. Let me know your thoughts on Deathloop coming to PlayStation Plus Premium and Extra. Do you think it's going to affect its release to Xbox Game Pass? What are your thoughts on IO Interactive and what they gained from putting Hitman 3 into Xbox Game Pass? And what do you think about the Tokyo Game Show and Xbox being there? What do you want to see from Xbox at the show? If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. If you're new here and you liked what you saw, consider hitting that subscribe button. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for your support and I'll catch you in the next video.